sponsored by the Securities and Exchange Commission of Nigeria. Hello and welcome to Eye on Nigeria's Capital Markets. Thank you for joining us. I'm Wale Famrewa. In today's program, we take a look at the interaction between capital market operators and regulators and learn more about the key programs designed to make Nigeria's market truly world class. The vision of Nigeria's Securities and Exchange Commission is to build a world class market. This objective has underpinned a series of reforms over the last four years. Notable changes include fresh management at the Nigerian Stock Exchange, which have helped to restore investor confidence and the integrity of the bourse. A series of rules have also been released by the SEC, which have galvanized activity in the bond market and supported the growth of the private equity and asset management industries. Many of these initiatives are the outcome of frank and intense interaction between capital market operators and regulators. A key part of these talks is the annual Capital Market Committee Retreat, which first took place in 2011. The annual Capital Market Committee Retreat basically brings stakeholders in the Nigerian capital markets together annually to review what has happened in the, in the, in the, in, in the current year, plan for the future, um, both the immediate future, but also uh, in the medium to long term essentially focusing on how we're doing with respect to our progress towards ensuring that we have a world-class capital market that is relevant to Nigeria. These retreats commenced in 2011, precisely in December, in the lovely city of Uyo, and we had as our chief host the governor, His Excellency the governor of Akwaibom State, Governor Godswill Akpabio, who hosted us very generously in Uyo. And at that retreat, far-reaching decisions were taken and um, one of the things that happened at that retreat was that we reconstituted the CMC subcommittees and seven focused subcommittees were set up and um, those committees have been working for the last two years. We, a lot of the growth that we see and the initiatives that we see in the market is due to the work of the CMC through those committees. If you recall, in the early 2000s, we set up a committee for reactivation of the bond market. Members of the Capital Market Committee, in fact, a member of the Capital Market Committee led that committee in the, in the name of uh, Mr. Tola Mungoluri, I remember. And today what we have as a very vibrant capital market was quite dormant in 1999. So that is definitely going to be to the credit of the Capital Market Committee because it was a forum where a subcommittee was set up headed by Okumaba, I remember, that continued to work with government that also led to the establishment of Fola Adiola Committee on the Bond Reactivation. So today we have that, but the credit goes to uh, CMC. We have in that community the SEC, the Apex Regulator. We have the Nigeria Stock Exchange, the Abuja Securities and Commodities Exchange. We have all the capital trade points. We have the CSCS. We have also, that is the central settlement um, system. We also have in that community all the various trade groups that operate in the community representing the capital market operators otherwise known as CMOs. We have the issuing houses, we have the stock brokers, we have the registrars, we have the rating agents, we have the trustees, we have custodians, we have reporting accountants. This year's retreat was held in Nigeria's capital city, Abuja, and examined the role of Nigeria's capital market in the context of the country's economic potential. Parallels have been repeatedly drawn between Africa's second largest economy and South America's economic powerhouse, Brazil. Brazil has become a notable investment destination over the last 25 years and its growth has been supported by funds raised from the local and international capital markets. Against this background, Leonardo Gomez Pereira, the chairman of Brazil's Securities and Exchange Commission, was an informed choice for a keynote address at this year's CMC retreat. Brazil is currently among the top 12 capital markets according to the internal criteria of IOSCO. Currently, we have one stock exchange, BMF Bovespa, which is also a public company, 
and is the 11th biggest stock exchange in the world in terms of capitalization. This is a good thing, but adds complexity. As Bovespa is a public company, and, but has an EBITDA margin of over 60%, there are a lot of lessons uh, that we can learn from Brazil and one of the reasons we like Brazil is that we can compare ourselves to them uh, where we have large populations, we're richly endowed in natural resources, um, we are going to be the poles of growth uh, for the globe uh, going forward. Brazil is farther ahead than us, uh, it has a 1.5 trillion dollar market cap market, um, it has one of the most well-regulated derivatives market uh, in the world. It has uh, leveraged, uh, it's reformed its pension sector and its pension sector actively invests uh, in, um, uh, in, in, the, in the capital markets. It's funded infrastructure uh, over the recent past through leveraging capital markets. So there are similarities. There is, um, uh, some of the things we need to learn is the value uh, that policymakers, senior government officials place uh, on the capital market and its importance in driving economic development. The second thing is the participation of Brazilians in their capital markets and the presentation that we got from the executive chairman uh, of uh, the Securities Commission in Brazil really highlighted their path over the last 10 years uh, in basically building uh, a world-class capital market. So it's great timing for us as we craft the future for the Nigerian capital markets over the next 10 years. The Brazilian Development Bank played a major role in providing long-term financing for these projects. However, since now we are talking about higher volumes, larger number of issuances, and a certain urgency to launch projects and unlock some bottlenecks of the Brazilian economy, that position us at a crossroads in terms of asking ourselves how can we play our role as regulators and have a balanced role between developing the markets and keeping them safe. We have been saying that it's imperative that these financial solutions based on the capital markets are structured in a manner to ensure sustainable and long-living growth. This is especially relevant considering the fact that long-term projects have very diversified characteristics, risks, and potentially a wide range of possible future cash flow scenarios. And that such market will only develop if investors feel safe. It would be a disaster if we had our market developing in a manner that could trigger an event that could materially damage investors' confidence and slows down market growth. Another key discussion point was the formation of a capital market master plan. And I think the Nigerian Securities and Exchange Commission is uh, following the example of the Malaysian market where they had a 10-year master plan and they found that when they looked at the, uh, the progress over 10 years, because they had a master plan, they had exceeded the expectations for the market. So putting in a very robust plan, looking at how can we develop this market and in terms of the market capitalization, drive it to a $1 trillion market. And the idea is that we all work together and agree on how we can basically develop the Nigerian capital market over the next 10 years, such that it's more responsive to the needs of Nigeria. Standardized processes is something not just from a regulator or SRO process, but this also involves market participants such as operators. Um, if three houses did a debt issuance in this market, um, sometimes the prospectuses would look quite different. If two houses did an M&A transaction, so, so there's, a, there's a whole lot of things around standardization, around even things like, you know, you know, turnaround times that we commit to, that we have to deal with. The other big issue is market capacity. And, you know, one of our big themes this year is financial literacy. Um, but the tremendous impact that financial literacy firstly has is that when you mobilize this wider community outside of the direct ecosystem of the capital markets and the conversation changes and there are more and more people who want to be involved in the capital markets, you've then also got to ensure that that ecosystem has lifted its game 
and its capacity so that it's able to service what you have mobilized outside of it. Low capital market literacy levels amongst Nigerians, however, remains an obstacle to the goal of building a world-class market. This was another key topic discussed at the retreat. We believe that financially responsible citizens is very critical to the transformation of Nigeria's economy and society. And therefore, we have one committee that is focused on what should be our plan in building financial capability, in enhancing financial literacy over the next 10 years. The key objective of the Capital uh, Market Literacy Com Committee is to come up with a blueprint on uh, educating the stakeholders of the importance of investment, to teach them how, what investment is all about, teach them how to manage their money, and also to devise means and ways where we can reach the grassroots. The challenges, you know, we, we envisage is, first of all, uh, due to the economic uh, meltdown we experienced in 2008, um, the general public has lost confidence in the market. So a major challenge is how to bring back this confidence that has been lost so that people will trust us and invest in the market. In a symbolic move to emphasize the SEC's focus on improving capital market literacy, this year's retreat kicked off with an interactive session with local market leaders. In collaboration with actors and other partners, the session projected the value of health consciousness and investment education. Save every day. And if you can't save one naira when you are a student and your, cho and your parents give you money, you will not be able to, spe to save one million naira when you are running a store. So we, SEC, along with the capital market operators, have decided that we will come out on the streets and preach that every Nigerian must learn how to save and invest. Whether you earn one naira, whether you earn one million, whether you earn 10 million, you must learn to save and invest. There were times when business was not so good for my dad. So from her little petty trading and her isusu, she was able to make up the things that she used to take care of us. So, about a year ago, I bought some little savings box for my two daughters. Help now what? Well, help now waiting. Well, it doesn't take too much to be healthy. And for these few minutes, all we want to address is please take care of your health. Financial literacy, financial capability is one area that we believe uh, as the apex regulator that we should encourage uh, stakeholders in the capital markets to focus on. So one of the things that we did ahead of the capital market retreat this year was basically to sponsor one of our financial literacy initiatives, which we call the Wealth and Health Program. What we basically do is provide healthcare uh, for free, provide advice from financial experts for free side by side in markets that are very large. So this year, uh, we spent uh, the day uh, in the Koje market in Abuja, uh, we leveraged role models in society. Uh, we asked uh, a number of well-known Nollywood stars uh, to come and give testimonials about how they manage their health and how they manage their financial uh, well-being. And we find that being creative about how we promote and project the importance of savings and investing in Nigeria is very, very important as we tried to build uh, uh, a society where the citizens are financially responsible. It was a very exciting day. After the break, we continue our look at the 2013 Capital Market Committee Retreat. Welcome back to Ion Nigeria's Capital Market. Another initiative designed to highlight the importance of investor education is the SEC-sponsored Secondary School National Quiz Competition, where teenagers displayed how much they knew about how the capital market works. And for the final round, I'm going to change the sequencing. 
uh, because I think uh, that will actually level out things in terms of options for questions. What are Guilt Hedge Securities? Guilt Hedge Securities are securities issued by government. Hmm? They are securities issued by government, which usually have zero, zero probability of default due to, the, due to the fact that they are backed up by the, by the, full, by the full pledge of the federal government. That is excellent. Yeah. High on the agenda of the 2013 Capital Markets Committee retreat was the creation of 10-year plans for the improvement of capital market literacy in Nigeria, as well as the growth and development of the broader capital market. Standardized processes is something not just from a regulator or SRO process, but this also involves market participants such as operators. Um, if three houses did a debt issuance in this market, um, sometimes the prospectuses would look quite different. If two houses did an M&A transaction, so, so there's, a, there's a whole lot of things around standardization, around even things like, you know, you know, turnaround times that we commit to, that we have to deal with. One of the other challenges that we have and we still have today, which I'm going to leave with the Capital Market Committee, is the issue of unclaimed dividend. If you recall, the Capital Market Committee under the leadership of SEC, made an attempt to see how we can address the issue of unclaimed dividend. It was about eight billion uh, during our time. I think the DJ of SEC was telling me the other day it's between 40 to 60 billion to be very conservative. I think that is still a work in progress for CMC. Use of technology across the market um, at all strata from operators, you know, to, you know, you know, even investors, you know, down to regulator. Um, we looked at shared services because clearly when you begin to think about the investments that will need to be made, the reality of it is that the fee or income pot in this market is not substantial enough for people to make the right investments. And, you know, there is a risk that you run there. Um, so one of the ways you know, that you can cut around that is really to begin to examine shared services across, you know, the market. We also talked about softer enablers, but which are, you know, should, should I say polish enablers, improving the quality of research across the market, getting standardization, and, and, and getting the ethics of the research profession, you know, you know, consistent with global standards. There was also a focus on non-interest products, Islamic finance assets globally are projected to rise to $2 trillion by 2015, given Nigeria's demographics with a roughly half Muslim population and the global search for returns by foreign investors, Nigeria's capital market operators have identified this sector as a growth opportunity. From financial inclusion research, a lot of Nigerians are not participating in the markets and many reasons for this is because um, the investments or interest is against their beliefs. So they feel that if they're able to create instruments that can meet the uh, requirements of certain sectors or 50% of the Nigerian market really, then um, we could bring in a lot of um, investors into the market and create financial inclusion. It's very similar to asset-based finance. And for a country where we have huge infrastructure needs, it's very important that we look at innovation, we look at the product options for us, and non-interest uh, financial products are very, very critical. Nigeria has a massive infrastructure deficit, uh, running into $300 billion or thereabouts. This cannot be funded purely by the government. We need to bring in the capital market. How do we fund this? By creating products that can um, address these needs. One of the things that we realized after the uh, global financial crisis is that the developed markets um, are slowing down or in recession. So we have to look at other areas where funds can be accessed to invest in our market. And we find that these are the Asian Tigers, this is the GCC, the Gulf, um, and Middle East. And in the Middle East, they have massive wealth funds looking for investments that are structured in a non-interest manner. And if we can simply create products that appeal to them, we can attra attract billions of dollars to invest in Nigeria to build our roads and our hospitals um, and our schools and develop the Nigerian economy. Subcommittees of the CMC include those looking into rules and compliance, market infrastructure and technology, 
the investment management industry, the fixed income market, and the commodities and securities exchanges. Another topic among stakeholders in Nigeria's capital market is the use of technology as an enabler for growth over the next decade. Technology is a great enabler for markets. It's an essential ingredient. We have markets that are not physical anymore. So the days of having a floor is actually very limited. You know, many markets are trading purely electronically. But what makes technology an enabler is that markets have to tap into technology for skill, they have to tap into technology for efficiency. They have to tap into technology for performance and speed. The CMC retreat presented several learning points to stakeholders in Nigeria's capital market. From the importance of risk management in Brazil to the role that technology is likely to play in the growth of the stock market. We now, we, we have to have in our culture, in day-to-day -day culture, uh, a framework so we identify risks better. If you look back in the 2008 crisis, I think one of the things that triggered the crisis was that the regulators and the, some market agents didn't identify what was going on. So the main concern we have today is to have a, a framework to identify and monitor risks so we can prevent another systemic crisis from happening again. Effectively, if you look at what XGen is about, it's about giving Nigeria the fastest uh, uh, trading platform in Africa today. It's about giving us a multi-asset, and that means when I say multi-asset, we're able to trade various instruments, and we're able to scale this up as well. So what XGen has done as well is that our broker-dealer community, we used to connect via very slow links, now connect via very fast links and connect reliably. What XGen has done is to give us high availability in our capital market. We've maintained 100% uptime uh, since we've launched XGen. And what, what XGen needs to do more of is actually enable our broker dealers to reach more than the current 2.5 million, but perhaps to increase that by a thousand fold to 25 million. And we believe that we're right on the way using technology as an enabler. I think I'm energized and excited about what we can do uh, in Nigeria. Um, I, this CMC retreat, uh, for me, uh, you know, by the time you've done a first year, a second year, and a third year, um, I think, uh, as others have said, it's something that has become part of the important calendar of events uh, for the capital market. And we all value it because it's really a relaxed environment to share ideas about what were our successes and challenges from the previous year, what are our plans uh, for the future year, and what can we think about as we in Nigeria progress towards world class. Capital market stakeholders in Nigeria are laying the foundation for the development of a world class market by articulating targets over the next 10 years. Nigeria is also learning from the successes of countries like Brazil in using the capital market to fund economic activity. The deliberation and planning that takes place within the CMC is a vital part of the process designed to raise the game in Nigeria's capital market and for it to play its role in raising funds needed to allow Nigeria actualize its economic potential. Wale Famrewa, CNBC Africa.